Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about how to manage a team, specifically in the data and tech space, uh, when there is turmoil. I don't know if you caught the news uh, recently, but there's a lot of turmoil in the tech space. So I thought this was a good opportunity to just get on and talk about how I've managed my teams going through uh, turbulent times in my past and maybe convey some of those tips and tricks to all of you. And if you are not a leader or manager in your space and you are an individual that's just going through some of these things, I hope this video gives you some inspiration, um, some sense of you know, you're not alone. A lot of people are going through things like this right now. And maybe some of the tips that I provide will help you out as well. So if this sounds interesting to you, stick around. All right. So starting out, I would say the first thing is, um, don't make too many assumptions. I think that oftentimes, um, you know, when there's these large reorgs or, you know, something is shaking up the you know company or organization that you're a part of um reorgs specifically don't always mean bad things oftentimes it might be you know a, a good change um it doesn't mean that people are uh, going anywhere um it might mean that you know you get to work with people that you are really interested in working with or on new projects um, but not everyone is going to feel that uh, change is good um, and change can just be scary sometimes that uncertainty that comes into play when you just don't know what's going on um, and managers can feel this way too right um, we don't always know what's going on even though we're uh, at the management level um, you know I try to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people not just even my direct reports but people that I care about or people that are other managers or, or or leaders in the organization to just you know be a friendly ear have that empathy right and ask you know how you doing how how you know how's this affecting you it could be for a number of reasons just make sure that you're not jumping to conclusions you give people that time that dedicated time to ask questions and um to talk it out and <clears throat> Usually I have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with folks so they have that um, open opportunity to ask questions, really, you know, put their emotions out there in a safe place without having other people kind of, you know, in the mix. I then usually have a larger like team meeting or organizational meeting where at that point there's no surprises because I've already had, you know, those conversations with people. Um, they, they kind of know how the changes are going to affect them individually. They've had that chance to ask their questions and I've had the chance to go and find answers for them because I don't always know the answers to the questions. Um, and I also kind of use that as an opportunity to pick out some themes that everyone might be concerned with um, so that when we have that larger team meeting um, or organizational meeting, I can kind of address those as, as a group so people know it's not just me telling them one thing and something else going on. Um, and the other thing is, so in that larger meeting, make sure that you give your folks a firm foundation. What's not changing? What um, in their charter is tried and true and isn't going away? What are the things that um, you all are doing that fits into the larger narrative? Because normally when these, at least the reorgs are happening, it, there's a reason for it. Um, it's because they're trying to focus on something new or trying to switch resources so that, you know, something can, you know, be accelerated or, you know, something like that. Um, that is something that you want to communicate with the larger uh, vision is and how your team and teams uh, fit into that narrative. The other thing is don't be overly uh, reassuring, meaning if you don't really know all the answers, don't make it sound like you do because you don't want to give them a false sense of um, knowledge that, that you have. And um, even as managers, you know, if we think we know what's going on, that doesn't always mean we do. So I usually like to say, um, you know, here is what we know of today, here are the plans, and here's what I know of them right now. But also try to work with your upper leadership to have a date where you can say, but we're going to know for sure by this date 
So um, they have something to to latch on to because if not, you're gonna just keep getting more and more questions about things. Um, the other thing is when your reorgs um, occur, you know, shifting of priorities will happen. Please make sure to, you know, try to explain what that means, why those priorities are better than the things that were a priority before. Try to shield your team as much as possible from the discussions of priority setting until things are set because you don't want them to feel like a, a rubber band, you know, going back and forth, you know, um, between what the priorities are. Sometimes there's a different ownership model, right? Like maybe your individuals or teams were owning certain products or projects or services and now they don't. Um, making sure that you work with your team on, you know, what that transition looks like. Um, making sure that they knew that the thing they worked and put all their blood, sweat and tears into is going to a good home, right? Like that's part of that reassurance. But also to make sure they understand you know, this thing is going to a new owner, which means their vision of it might change. Um, what the customers are for this uh, might change. That thing might go into KTLO mode, which is keep the lights on. It just goes into life support until, you know, the new thing comes out or, you know, you can unplug the thing or whatever it might be from a strategy perspective and making sure that your team understands what that looks like and then giving them an understanding of when updates and iterations are going to come down. The other thing is when this stuff happens, um, really in the individual meetings, try to talk to folks about how their workload might change. Maybe they have less things and how you're going to fill that. You might think taking things off people's plates makes them rejoice because now they have more time to do the things that they really need to do. But sometimes people perceive that as they're being punished. Something's being taken from them. Make sure they understand what you want them to fill that time with um, so that there's no questions. Um, and, and maybe talk to them about well, what do you think, you know, out of the things that you do still have that are imp important. And here's the broader context that you can be um, working on instead of the thing that you were working on. This is, you know, how I talk to my teams, at least when these things are happening. The other thing is um, some folks, depending on the severity of, of what's going on, might ask for some time off. And um, you really want to honor that if, if you can, you know, if they don't have time off you know, try to, to work with your HR department or your, your management team and see what you can do. Because some people, you know, there, there's, there's three kind of categories when a lot of chaos is going on um, with change. And, you know, this is probably not an exhaustive list, but the three kind of categories that I've always found is the folks that are directly affected. And, you know, I try to give as much empathy and support if it's more of a reorg and someone's going to an area that they don't really know very well or maybe they don't like very much, um, kind of working through what are your concerns, what are some of the things that you know of or assumptions you're making and try to help them address them or find ways to um, uh, live with it until they can find an alternative solution. You know, whether it's a boss that they don't really like over on that side, you know, maybe being a friendly ear to talk to about like strategies on, well, maybe there's miscommunication, that sort of thing. But then you also have the folks that are um, neutral, meaning they are not directly affected by uh, what's going on. You might think, oh, they're they're just hunky dory and fine. No, in fact, there's a lot of research that says, you know, when there's you know lots of layoffs or lots of change going on, uh, lots of reorgs, even the people that survive, um, they do feel a little bit of survivor's guilt, and they also feel like, oh, great, now I have to pick up all the time that that other person was doing, or I have to pick up all those resources or those responsibilities, um, making sure you you work with them on what that looks like and how you can get a plan in place so that, you know, it can be distributed or maybe you can do a new hire. I don't know what your situation would be um, in order to do that. Um, and making sure that people know that they can come to you and talk to you about their concerns because the folks that remain, it's it's still disruptive to them. Um, there's gonna be a slowdown on how much they can produce or they are so worried about what's going on 
they start to work more hours or they try to overcompensate basically. And you wanna make sure that you address those things when you see it and be aware and kind of watching for them because you'll either see a slowdown and then you know you wanna give some motivational speaking or you know give, give that person an ear to understand like what's going on but on the other side is again that that I'm going to I'm going to show them that I'm still valuable and that's why they kept me and and that's why I stayed in the place that I'm at and not you know got moved over to these other teams um, and then you just ramp up and ramp up and ramp up and then that person will burn out so that's why as a management person or a leader you need to really be careful about these things and you know give the support needed the other category of course is folks that are not directly affected but are um, tangentially affected meaning one of their friends or one of their co-workers they work with a lot or one of their teammates um, are being affected by the changes and you know that's something that again you want to make sure you're there you talk through with them um, normally a reorg doesn't affect it this category too too much um, you'll still get to talk to those folks you still get to work with them um, what I have found is like doing coffee chats or getting together for lunch, you know, with the old team, um, is really nice because you all can kind of like share stories and, um, you know, see whatever everyone else is doing. You can find ways to collaborate more often with those folks because their skills didn't change the things that they know don't change. So, you know, maybe that you, you all can benefit from the, the new things you're working on and, and still, you know, staying in communication with, with each other, you know, on the topic of whose decision it was as managers, the decisions are based on input that you have given, um, depending on where you are in the organization. Um, normally when I'm trying to help with like reorg kind of discussions, I always want to make sure like the career path and the interests of the person are being considered. So I've already been having those conversations with folks in the most, for the most part where I know what they want to do. I know what they like. I know what they don't like. Um, and I don't always have time to consult with them in the moment, but you know, when we're, you know, strategizing on what the reorg would look like and who's going to be doing what and why, um, I do like to have individual conversations with those individuals and be like, okay, well, here's, you know, why I was thinking this would be a good idea for you. Here's the opportunity. What do you think about it? And if they're like, oh no, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Um, then don't do it. <laughs> right? Like find, find alternative solutions because um, if you move someone into doing something that they absolutely detest and they really don't want to do it, you do run the risk of them looking for another job or just, you know, doing the bare minimum and, you know, doing some of those things. So you want to try to take the considerations and interests of people in mind as much as, as possible. And if it's something that they don't, they're not a hundred percent, you know, bought into it yet, you know, talk to them about their concerns. See if it really is a good fit. Maybe you thought it was a good fit and, and maybe it's not any longer um, based on the, the feedback that they've given to you. Um, but I mean, maybe the the concerns they have are unfounded or maybe they were founded and you found a way to address them so that they feel more assured with the the change so that's one way uh to do it part of all of this is leading through change and a big part of that is trying to make sure that you as a manager or a leader really understands your team really understands what their skills are where maybe there's a little bit of up leveling but they have the capability of doing it they have uh, the promise that, you know, you know, they're very capable of getting to where they need to be, um, knowing where, you know, their shortcomings are and maybe how to get over those, or maybe somebody's just not interested, or maybe they're just not very good at that thing. And that's okay because it's not needed for, you know, certain roles or certain projects. Since you should be actively working with your team on, you know, what direction they want to go, what they want to do, how to help them get there. And when these big, you know, chaotic moments happen, you really understand your team to help lead them through this and say like, look, this is our role in this. This is where we're going to go with it. Um, and making sure they have the trust in you as their leader uh, to, to come to you with their concerns and their ideas and, you know, anything else that, that's going on because of all the disruptions. So when all of that happens, um, just again, the biggest piece of advice is that empathy, being an 
open door, um, making sure that you talk to folks and address them as individuals, not just as a team or as an org, um, and having as much open communication uh, and, and transparency as possible, I think is some of the biggest things to keep in mind. All right, so with all of this, um, I really reach out anybody that's going through anything like this right now, uh, whenever you're watching this video, um, my real email is in the description box below. Please reach out. I'm on LinkedIn, connect with me. I really do love to help people, you know, that might be going through some things or, you know, maybe you're a manager and you're trying to think through, you know, strategy on change management and what you're trying to do with this. Um, let me know. I would love to help if, if I can. Um, I'm not a miracle worker for sure, um, but I'm always willing to, to offer a helping hand when possible. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.